Thanks for checking out this movie review. This will be a no-spoilers movie review because it's not a older film. It's one that is currently out and available, and I'll give you the information on where it's available. This is an independent film. Uh, the producer, Chris Sergi, reached out to me and said, hey, would you like a screener to review this? And I said, yes, far be it for me to turn down screeners because I like watching new stuff. I especially like to support independent so um, thank you very much to Chris Sergi and the people involved with this film, Portal, which obviously is a 2019 release. Now let me give you the initial information on this that they sent to me through an email. Horror Hound did it. Oh, you probably can't see that because of the... Sorry. Uh, so Portal stars Ryan Merriman, Jamie Tisdale, Mick Watford, Nahara Townsend, Ronaldo Pesh, Zavaris, and Heather Langenkamp is the big name to kind of draw in the horror nerds, I suppose. So it's called Portal. Um, it's an award-winning supernatural horror film with an all-star cast, featuring a rare appearance by iconic scream queen Heather Langenkamp, obviously known for A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, when an ambitious ghost hunter performs a risky ritual opening a portal to the other side, he and his team qu quickly find themselves way over their heads in a fight for survival against an ancient demonic force. Uh, so this film currently is available for digital on-demand viewing through Apple TV or iTunes, Amazon Video, Vudu, Google Play, Microsoft Movies and TV, and Fandango Now. Just to let people know, there was a award for Jamie Tisdale in her role in this film as Chris. Uh, best female performance in a feature film at Shriekfest this year. So just giving people a little bit of that information. Now, uh, let me break this down. Written and directed by Dean Aliado. Also written partially by Peter Dukes. Now, I will say overall the writing I enjoyed for this. Well, actually, let me backtrack just a little bit first. There is a bit of a disclaimer with this type of film for me. Um, I'm not a big fan of the subgenres within horror of, like, ghost movies, and I don't like ghost hunting stuff. I don't like ghost hunting shows. I don't like ghost hunting movies, typically. So this film is actually both of those things. It's kind of like a double whammy situation for me. But that said, I actually enjoyed the movie a lot more than I was expecting to, because obviously my expectations weren't that high, knowing what it was going to be, uh, topic-wise. And that's why I'm saying I have to give this disclosure disclosure because I have a natural bias against those types of films. So I was pretty surprised when the film played out as it did for me. I enjoyed it, actually. I was like, all right. Uh, one of the first things I want to say about this, the directing and cinematography is really nice with this film. It looks really good. It has a very nice aesthetic. It looks very clean and crisp. And there's a lot of, like, inspired camera work that's done with this that keeps your interest as a viewer. Like I said, it's very aesthetically pleasing because of this camera work. There are a lot of interesting and fun camera angles that are used throughout the film, and I really like that aspect of it. Uh, really drove home to me that the director and cinematographer, who may be the same person, I didn't look further into that, um, really know what they're doing. It was, I really like that aspect of it. Very, very nice. Um, the acting overall was good for being a lower budget affair. Um, so yeah, I mean, I didn't think any of the acting was like, oh my gosh, that's, that's an amazing performance right there. But I do think it was above par for a low budget indie film. So pretty solid acting in my opinion. Uh, I like that they have comedic moments in this film. That's one of the big sellers for me early on with this film is because it's a genre that I'm not huge into, well, subgenre, well, two subgenres basically, that I'm not that much into, the, the comedic aspects of the script really helped me out with it and kind of sucked me in, you know, because I could have a few laughs and enjoy that. Uh, also, it like pokes fun at itself. It's a very self-aware film, uh, especially from the aspects of the ghost hunting portion of it. So, um the crew that they're kind of uh, following in the film, it's not like a found footage or anything like that, but the crew that's being followed in the film, uh, they're very realistic about things, and uh, the glimpse into how they do things and what they're trying to do is fun and funny because they have all these kind of comedic interactions with individuals within their team and outside of their team, and um, I think that drives a lot of the interest for me early on in it. Uh, it doesn't take itself... 
It doesn't take itself too seriously early on, although it does get serious later, and that's when I started to enjoy it a little bit less for that reason, but it was totally necessary for the actual story because in the context of what's going on, people are not going to be making jokes while that stuff is happening. So it was realistic for what the story was and the world that was set up within the film early on. So um, there's a lot of enjoyment with the comedy up front, but know that that kind of goes away because things get really serious. But then at the end, it comes back a little bit, and I really like the ending for that reason. The ending for that reason was, was nice. Uh, some of the dialogue actually doesn't fully land in this, and it's not because I don't think it was written well. It's because I think there are a few del li uh, line deliveries by the actors that aren't um, done the proper way. You know, when, when you're working on dialogue, you have to make sure that it feels right. Like, what's written on the page isn't necessarily what makes sense coming out of the mouth of the actors. So you kind of have to work with that a little bit on set and kind of say okay, for how this person's playing this character or how this per this character feels, um, they you have to say the same thing that's on the page, but it has, doesn't have to be exact. You know, tailor it just a little bit to how they would normally speak. And so there are a few lines like that, not a whole lot, but a few lines like that where the delivery wasn't right on. And I, you know, actually listening to what the text of it was, the actual dialogue portion of it was, I was like, yeah, within the context of the actual script, like, there's nothing wrong with the way that was written. It's just the delivery could have been a little bit better. But like I said, there wasn't, there weren't that many moments of that. It's just, and since there aren't a whole lot of moments like that, you notice it more when there are moments like that. So you're just kind of like, oh, that's a little, but you can move past it. Not a biggie. Um, I love, well, I just wrote down, I love that they're not being serious in this film, at least early on. And it's, Along with that, the other thing I really love about the story is that there's this kind of, um, what's the best word for this? There's a dilemma of do we do things on the up and up and do things the right way, like we're really looking for ghosts, or do we do things to keep going and get funding and make sure we're successful, which would mean not being truthful about everything. And that's kind of like, that plays to a real question that exists within the realm of these ghost hunting shows right now. Um, actually, I kind of feel like it's kind of always been that way with, with those types of shows. It's like, how much of this is legitimate? How much of this is people saying they hear something when they don't hear something? How much of this is people manufacturing the scares and the, and the things that are happening? And you get that in the film. And what's nice is that it starts with kind of a few misgivings about what's going on just because the the people involved like want it to be there so they think they're perceiving something and then they kind of realize oh no that's not what it is um so then they kind of like take a step back and they're like i don't want to go down that road of you know presenting something that's not accurate and so you see very early on kind of where they are with their um with their i guess moral compass in a sense when it comes to this types of stuff this type of stuff so that's kind of nice that they establish it that way also when they're kind of like oh i think i i think this is going on there's some comedic answers for that stuff early on that i really enjoyed uh then there's there's kind of the moment where you know inevitably a person's um morals are kind of tested and it's interesting to see what people decide to do in those moments. But I really like kind of the commentary that this creates around um, what's going on with these ghost hunting shows, really. Because A, it's making fun of it a little bit. B, it's um, using it to have fun in the film. And C, it's kind of, you know, asking this question of like, um, you know, should you be doing it mainly for entertainment or should you be doing it because... You, you know, you believe it's a real thing and you're trying to get the actual evidence out there. So I just kind of like how that plays out. Um, let me see what else I got for my notes. Uh, you get it immediately that it's the behind the scenes like ghost hunting thing. There's, there's kind of no misgivings about what this film is going to be. It lets you know what it is very early on. And that is fine for a film like this. That's good for a film like this, actually. You want to know what you're getting into. Uh Love the fact that it's very self-aware and that actually that self-awareness that I was talking about actually really keeps it from feeling like it's 
it gets into the cliche or tired realm because they're using a subgenre that it, it has been used a lot. And it's easy to do a script and do a movie that stays within, you know, those well-tread um, tire tracks, basically, of where everyone else has gone with these things. So there's a there's a bit of their own voice in this. There's a bit of their own twist. And like I said, it being super self-aware and, you know, the comedic aspects of it and poking fun at what they're doing is what kind of sets it apart and keeps it from falling into the realm of cliched and tired. So I like that. Uh, Heather Langenkamp obviously is the big name draw within this. But um, two things about that. One, actually, I think that she was on screen way more than I assumed. Because a lot of times when you see like the big names thrown out there for more independent films, it's kind of like, this person's in it, and they're in it for like a minute or something. And they're not even like in a scene with the actual actors. It's like they just sent a crew out to their house for a day, and they just like got them talking on the phone for like 30 seconds or something, and that's the extent of it. No, she's actually like in it substantially, in my opinion, acting with the other actors, and I thought that was kind of impressive that they were able to, to pull that off because obviously she's an icon and it's cool to see her doing her stuff. That said, I didn't think her acting was all that great, to be honest. It was okay. Uh, but the thing you have to consider is she hasn't been doing a lot of acting. I mean, she did a lot of her stuff in the 90s and then she's done some stuff here and there after that, but she did also have like a large chunk of time where she wasn't doing any acting. So... It is one of those things where, like, if you're not doing it consistently, you're not, you know, you, if, you, if you don't use it, you lose it type thing. And, you know, her I wouldn't say her acting is bad in this. It's just for her being the big name, it's not what you wanted out of her performance. Just saying. Um, and it pains me to say that because I think she's a cool person. But, uh, and like I said, like, I was more into it in the beginning than I was towards the end, but that's my kind of natural bias with subgenres like that so you know so yeah um so that's actually those are all my feelings on this that's my breakdown of this film um like i said it's already available i gave you that information so you can check it out if this sounds good to you yeah, i'm gonna go for a star rating on this it's kind of hard when i have these types of biases to kind of do this um i think comparing it to other films and trying to take my bias out of it i think out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a three star rating. I think it's, I think it's better than, than in the middle for me, like better than me. Yeah. So yeah, three star rating. Uh, I would recommend it to people, especially who like this subgenre. and it was a fun time. So once again, thank you, Chris Sergi and the folks who put together portal and uh, thank you everyone for checking this review out. And if you could do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. Cause it means a lot to me. Literally takes you a second. Totally painless. Put some comments down there. Have you already seen this film? What are your thoughts on it? Are you one of these people who actually likes ghost hunting stuff and likes ghost subgenre films in in the, within the horror genre? Uh, let's talk about it. But thanks so much for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.